Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see you all. Good morning. Um, my name is Ambarish Mitra, uh, co-founder of Grey Parrot. And uh, today I'd like to talk about one of the most pressing issues of our time, but often overlooked, which is waste, or as some call it, trash in some countries. And um, it's, it's a big crisis. Um, we often camouflaged under the name of plastic, but the world of waste is several kind of materials. But let's not just talk about the problem. I see it as an opportunity, almost like a trillion dollar opportunity. So that's what we'll cover in a little more detail. Uh, waste contributes to uh, more than nine million deaths a year. Uh, the pollution that is linked to it. It's actually more than AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. Yeah. Has a tremendous impact socially around the world, the way it's burned and treated. It has a huge economic impact where billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of materials. You know, I'm using the word materials here we use the word waste, but let's not forget that this very product is a positive commodity when you're using it at home. And the moment it goes through the vent of your bin, you see it is of no value, but it's the, it's the same material, which can be used in several other ways in the society, but at this point, most of it gets disposed in a way that makes it invisible Invisible, but not harmless. And lastly, the amount of waste that is burned in the world, it produces emissions higher than even the aviation industry and actually few other industries combined. And if you take the manufacturing of the products in the cycle and the waste disposal, that number would be more than 55 to 6% of global greenhouse emissions. It doesn't end there. I mean, we are, of course, celebrating tech here. It's a tech EU con conference. And, and in that celebration, we celebrate innovation in the consumption economy, right? Like how are things being built? How e-commerce is being optimized? How every millisecond of our lives are traded and sold? Because, you know, at least between and in any given country, more than five to 10 companies know what you're about to do in the next one minute of your life. You know, how you got here through Uber, how you, which product you're about to deliver for your lunch through Deliveroo, which train routes you took, which airline you're about to board, which products you're buying on Amazon, which product you're about to choose on in Instagram, or you're being targeted. Which is great because it's created an incredible consumption, fast-paced economy, and a lot of tech innovation has gone there. There is a parallel world. And that economy is almost the size of 20, 30 trillion dollars worth of consumption every year. There's a shadow economy, I call it the abyss. Where does it all go? You consume, you throw away. It's not measured, so I can put a number to it. Today it's like worth one and a half trillion dollars, but could be a lot more. Uh, we'll cover that a little more later. But there's a lot of opportunity in these lost materials. And there is no digitization, hence there is no measurement. Imagine if we could measure and account for waste, not as a liability, but literally account for every product that is consumed from a chocolate wrapper to large boxes, electronic items, cars, everything. Attribute and also trace its value, trade it like energy or data. That's the world Grey Parrot is building where we see waste as a resource, 
not as a liability. Hence, introducing, we came up with the idea of waste intelligence. We took computer vision, a fusion of computer vision, um, deep learning, and material sciences, these three branches, and build this very large scale AI model supported with the hardware. For investors in the room, hardware is important. You've got to solve world's problems. You have to make your hands dirty. Hardware which analyzes billions of data points in waste streams and figures out where is your waste going from cities and towns, where it leaves for, does it get recycled, reused, recovered, or lost? And important to know that these gray parrot analyzers are put in facilities called MRFs in our industry, but they're called material recovery facilities. You might ask me the question that why not, why not um, in the bins or in municipality trucks? We actually thought of the value chain. When, because when you think of, when we ask even the joke public about it, people really think their part of the recycling is done when you put the right product in the right bin and you imagine some kind of a recycling fairy will look after it and it's, it's been taken care of. But unfortunately, majority of recycling comes in mixed sources because you're putting all different kinds of bottles, cardboards in one single line and putting it away. And then they end up in these facilities where they're again put together if you put this thought in your mind, product can only be recycled or recovered if they're made into single streams. And we overgeneralize by calling things paper and plastic where these are polycarbonates. And HDP, which is your milk bottle, is very different from your water bottle, which is PET. Or there's food grade, there's non-food grade. The chemical components in each one of them is very different. They need to be understood and separated. The industry was ripe for disruption, and that's why, as you can see in this looping video, if you dive into the detail, there are 111 classes of objects which covers for 99.9% .9 of all materials humans consume on a daily basis. And they go through these facilities, they're analyzed, and they're separated. We'll show you a process, how it works. So in this video, you'll notice, this is what a typical material recovery facility looks like, where the AI model is classifying all different materials. This is a slowed down video. This belt actually typically moves at two to three meters a second. And then it classifies the waste composition. The waste plant manager sees the recipe and the financial value of the waste going through. So they now have a visibility of what each material is, and they get to see how much material loss could happen. Then it analyzes each aspect of how the whole plant works before and after. We're digitizing the entire value chain inside the plant and what it's worth, and op trying to help them optimize machines. They also send signals to different existing mechanical machines and gives it intelligence to whether it's robotic arms, whether it's optical sorters, whether it's ballistic separators, almost like dynamically controlling the whole plant. Those of you know the company Waymo, it doesn't build cars. It makes existing cars into self-driving cars. The same way Gray Parrot makes existing plants into a semi-automated to fully automated plant by giving brains to an existing mechanical infrastructure. This is our new gray parrot analyzer box. In a typical plant, we put anything between six to 20 based on the scale uh, of the plant. So in terms of scale, we analyzed 40 billion objects 
last year, which sounds like a very large number, but still a very small fraction of what happens in the world. But we're trying our best to scale and improve. We're deployed in 20 plus countries, uh, in mostly in Europe, US, and parts of uh, South Asia, like Korea, Japan. And um, our clients are finding tremendous value in how their yield and recovery in terms of quality and contaminants are being removed because of artificial intelligence being put in the loop. Before Gray Parrot, all these things were done very manually. This is another example of the Gray Parrot technology being integrated in something called iTainer, which is like a container ship container ship with a, a recycling mini morph inside it. This is a big innovation in South Korea. And these guys are trying to bring this to Europe and US where your waste gets recycled within the city itself. It doesn't need to be shipped out. But still, the waste needs to be understood, right? So again, like a brain, our analyzers are being embedded in this very system. Uh, and we are seeing uh, increased recovery and uh, much more. So almost like many, the whole waste industry is mechanical and they all had different versions and vision of it. What was missing was a large piece of AI. Today, those of you using generative AI and other forms of AI in the room, you are, it's not like you never knew how to write an essay or you never knew how to draw an image. It's just bringing a lot of efficiency in what you do. But unlike that in this industry, they're able to do things that was not imaginable before, you know, because look at the consumption patterns in the world and it's a very large problem uh, to solve. Not only we do that, the system analyzes not on a material level alone, but also on a brand level in real time. We are able to tell you whether a product with a certain sleeve or without sleeve gets recovered or not, with a certain shape or certain caps. There are a lot of multi-material products. There's a whole value chain redesign or almost reinvention happening because the world of brands, when they put the infinite triangle of recycle on their products, they still do not know or cannot guarantee that product will be recycled because no one really had a view what happens end of life. But now this technology enables really massive packaging innovation where they can understand and make a big difference for not today's products, but at least for tomorrow's products. They didn't have the data. So in terms of the intelligence, we have four key stakeholders besides the morphs, which understand their products on a material level and help it recover more. We also have the world of brands who are rethinking about the future of packaging. But this data is very valuable, you know, and so of course it gives a little more impact to the world of carbon trading exchanges because we're making recovery into a traceable commodity. And of course, for policymakers who are trying to introduce policies like extender producer responsibility and other forms of plastic taxes, they get a lot more insight too. In terms of economics, this is a huge opportunity. You know, the just the focusing on the consumer package industry or FMCG, which is a $12 trillion industry, and the waste itself is $1.3 trillion industry, there's a huge mismanagement of assets. I'm calling the word asset here. Because if you make waste and materials fully traceable, I don't think this industry should be called waste management, should be called, in my ideal world, material asset management. Because the issue is here we're using 
by calling the waste word, already making it into a negative commodity, where this is a commodity like any other commodities, and it should be brought back to life for reuse and re recovery and repurpose. So our immediate addressable market today is $9 billion. This is just on the intelligence side, but ever expanding. What I have not covered is the second biggest polluter in the world is construction and demolition. Fashion, textile followed by that, electronics waste. This is a very transferable technology. Everything I said so far was focused on packaging materials or municipality solid waste. Things you, in every city, every town, every village in the world, you throw in your bins from offices or homes. The world of waste is big and large. For the founders in the room, and also the investors, do not ignore this. It's very easy to get carried away thinking the digital revolution is done. It's not. We were not looking into waste. I was always in the field of computer vision, trying to digitize other processes in the world, then found a big gap, almost unbelievable. Like any consumer, I used to believe recycling works. And it works to some extent. But when I got deep into the world of material sciences, I realized that we pay so much money in manufacturing these things, but then we throw it away for nothing. Each arrow combined there is a trillion dollar opportunity. There's a big business model in every part of this process. You know, there's only some part of the process we are covering, but there is huge, huge opportunity. And really the future of the world is going to depend a lot on how we really cater to harnessing our existing resource, reduce wastage, and create opportunities in that. Of course, we are building incredible companies and with software as a service or AI models, that is great. But how it impacts our daily lives of people on a planetary level makes a difference. And I'm not here really giving an environmental speech. I'm really, really talking about an economic opportunity. And whether it's in agriculture or health sciences or in waste or other, other, other physical aspects of the world, there is tremendous opportunity. So I would say, like for the founders, look where no one's looking. And of course, for investors, there is this kind of deep tech has deep impact, but also it's in the perfect inter intersection of planet, people, and profit. So on that closing note, uh, I'd like to thank you all for inviting me here. Um, and I wish you all the very best. And I'd like you to continue to take interest in topics like waste and look for other opportunities, which is being right now ignored or not being understood. Thank you very much.